Each year, scientists, researchers, and everyday people make incredible discoveries, helping us to better understand the world around us. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at interesting discoveries. US scientists created smallest ever flying structures. Engineers at Northwestern University have created electronic microchips as small as a grain of sand that can fly. These microchips are so tiny, they are not fitted with a motor or an engine, but are designed to catch the wind as it flies. Even though they are tiny, the potential of these microchips is huge. These sand-sized flyers are decked out with all sorts of tech, including sensors, antennas, data storage and power sources. The lead engineer, John A. Rogers, said that this would allow miniaturized electronic devices to sense the environment for contamination monitoring, population surveillance, or disease tracking. He later said that the biological world acted as inspiration for the design. The flying microchips are modeled after maple trees, the trees with the propeller seeds that would twirl down like helicopters. The similar patterns and research from observations meant the team could create an aerodynamic product that would be evenly spread and keep steady whilst flying. Rogers explained this in a scientific manner, saying that these biological structures are designed to fall slowly and in a controlled manner, so they can interact with wind patterns for the longest possible period of time. Of course, the design did not magically fall into place first time. There were a number of designs that, following plenty of testing, did not quite make the cut. One design featured three wings, some had different angles and shapes, though all had the goal for a controlled movement as it flies. Rogers believes the team has beaten nature in their goal as their design allows for stable trajectories and slower terminal velocities than those seen in nature. The main concern about the project, as the environmental focus is so clear, was the electronic litter. Once the microchips have fallen, what happens to the waste? Rogers' team already develops transient electronics, meaning that once their job is done, these flying microchips will safely dissolve in water. This seems like a fantastic step forward. We are living in an age of constant scientific breakthroughs, from the miracles of the past to the research of the present and the scary concepts of the future. Chinese scientists are working on a Mars drone that flies faster than sound. With whispers of humans being able to colonize on Mars growing into genuine scientific discussions, it is only a matter of time before we will need to develop quick, efficient transport options. In China, a drone that is being designed to fly faster than the speed of time is under development and has great possibilities should humans ever make it to Mars. So far, this project has a proposal for a hypersonic aircraft to move between possible colonies on Mars and ourselves here on Earth. The concept so far details a drone clocking in at 1,100 pounds that is able to travel five times the speed of sound, as reported in the South China Morning Post. This design is in incredibly early stages and may never be completed, though the scientific community is already counting down. Xu Xu, a researcher at Beijing University, explained that there are many technical issues that need to be solved before this flight could take place. Balancing the impact on the environment and the atmosphere here on Earth versus on Mars is just one of many that the team is working to resolve. So far, it has not been specific whether the aim is to travel faster than sound on Earth or Mars, with the speed of sound on Mars traveling at 540 miles per hour as opposed to Earth's 760 miles per hour. While these are both incredibly quick for the drone to travel at, especially when aiming to transport goods and people, there is a notable difference. The drone has a very sleek design, which is helpful regarding aerodynamics, with SCMP likening the design to a cruise missile. Another notable point is the use of magnesium to fuel the craft. Mars's atmosphere is 96% carbon dioxide, meaning magnesium can burn efficiently, whereas here on Earth, CO2 is not a good oxidizer. So magnesium can burn with a high enough temperature, though this is not an efficient choice. Differences like this are yet to be ironed out. The potential for transport on and around Mars is fantastic, but we are decades away from both needing it and perfecting the design. The discoveries we make each year, even each day, 
are fascinating, and looking back at the technology and the initiative we have as humans is impressive, to say the least. Antarctic Lake is full of life Antarctica is known for being a place where life does not flourish. Although creatures such as penguins, seals and krill do inhabit the barren land, most of these species do not live there year-round, and migrate elsewhere to escape the totally inhospitable and brutal winter. When researchers visit, the conditions are so extreme that they must take intense precautions to prevent hypothermia, or worse. The last thing that any of these researchers expected to find was an area actually teeming with life, but that is exactly what they stumbled upon. Under an ice sheet about 3,500 feet thick lies a lake about 50 feet deep and 54 miles square. Researchers interested in studying this lake used drills and hot water to break through the layer of ice and take 15 gallons of water samples and a sediment core over 15 feet long from the dark water below. What these samples revealed surprised the researchers. Study and analysis determined that the subglacial lake was positively teeming with bacterial life and the samples taken contained an average of 10,000 bacterial cells per milliliter. Although this number may seem paltry in comparison to the 1 million bacterial cells per milliliter in samples taken from the ocean for a totally sunless underground lake, the numbers are astonishing. The fact that there is such a relative abundance of organic matter means that the lake could very likely be supporting other, more complex life forms, which the research expedition will begin to search for soon. A nearby subglacial lake also revealed abnormally high levels of bacteria during an expedition in 2013, which further validates these more recent findings and leads researchers to theorize that the lakes were at one point connected to the larger ocean thousands of years ago and thus have remnants of carbon deposits from early photosynthesizing organisms that allow the modern-day bacteria to survive. The discovery of such a surprising abundance of life forms is important to researchers for two reasons. The first is that it gives hope and guidance to the search for extraterrestrial life forms, especially on Mars, which has evidence of dried up underground saltwater lakes not unlike the one uncovered in the Antarctic. The second benefit of this discovery for researchers is that it provides important information about the history of Antarctica and what that now uninhabited place might have looked like thousands of years ago. Scientists who are studying these underground lakes believe that there could be over 400 such examples scattered throughout Antarctica, and, rather than a gigantic ice sheet covering the Earth's surface, the barren land is actually more like a frozen wetland with rivers and lakes as big as some of the Amazonian bodies of water. Further analysis of these subglacial lakes will continue to shed more light on what might actually be a more complex ecosystem than anyone has yet realized. AI hides data a concern surrounding AI is that it will learn and hide things from its creators. For researchers at Stanford and Google, an AI did just that in order to cheat at a task it was given. CycleGAN, which stands for Cycle Generative Adversarial Network, is a neural network skilled in image-to-image -image translation, where it can transfer the characteristic of one image to another, such as turning an image from one style of painting to another or a zebra into a horse. In this case, CycleGAN was trained to transform aerial images into street maps and street maps into aerial images. In a paper released in 2017 entitled CycleGAN, a master of steganography, the researchers noted the ability of CycleGAN to hide information about source images in the images it generates through a high-frequency signal that is nearly imperceptible. The title of the paper alludes to its image-hiding capabilities. Steganography is the technique of hiding data within a file or message to avoid detection. It was noticed because the system started performing too well and added items such as skylights and exhaust vents into aerial images transformed from street maps that were devoid of this information. Rather than interpret features of each type of map and match it to the correct features of the other map, it encoded data that it could just use the original aerial photo to recreate it instead of creating a new aerial image from the street map. 
While on the surface it appears that the AI is highly intelligent and can fool humans, it actually highlights how a neural network can currently be fooled itself. CycleGAN, in this instance, is vulnerable to adversarial attacks. This is where small amounts of data are hidden in an image or dataset that will lead to an AI producing an output image of the attacker's choosing. 99% of ocean plastic has gone missing It's no secret that of the huge amounts of plastic we consume each day, a vast amount winds up in our oceans. Campaigns to reduce single-use plastic, such as the introduction of paper straws and the heartbreaking pictures of birds tangled in bags and other packaging, have been aiming to tackle this, though there is still an estimated 8 million tons of plastic entering the ocean annually. Whilst the messages to stop polluting the ocean have been clear for years, and we know that the waste entering the oceans is in abundance, scientists are confused as to where the plastic actually is in the oceans themselves. We can see the awful garbage patches and the litter along beaches, but the plastic we can see, observe and measure only accounts for about 1% of all ocean plastic. Unnerving answers have begun to emerge as research has gone on. Eric van Sabiel, an oceanographer at Utrecht University in the Netherlands, used the analogy of an iceberg to explain what we think is happening. We see only the tip of the iceberg, meaning that the waste piling up on the surface is by no means the bulk of the plastic pollution. This actually accounts for less than half of 1% of waste, he says. The rest of the iceberg, or the other 99%, is under the surface levels. The maps of our oceans are not overly extensive and only observe the surface, barely looking past it. We do not have any way to currently confirm exactly how much plastic is in one part of the ocean at any one time. Research seems to indicate that the plastic is accumulating in much larger amounts in some of the deepest parts of the ocean, settling on the sea floor and becoming buried. Helga Nyman, a biogeochemist at the Royal Netherlands Institute for Sea Research, has suggested that part of the issue in detecting plastic in the oceans could be it breaking down into small fragments that are so minuscule they are difficult to observe and detect. Nyman stated that the plastic is more like a chemical dissolved in the water than floating in it. Monterey Bay is the land border to America's largest national marine sanctuary. At first glance to any visitors, the view seems picturesque, with hardly any litter or problems, though this can quickly be debunked. Since 2017, scientists from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute used customized remote control submersibles to collect samples of the fragments of plastic within the water by filtering seawater to take a photograph of what is in it. The lead researcher on the project, Anila Choi, a professor of oceanography at the University of California, San Diego, said, just because you don't see it, doesn't mean it isn't there. The results of this investigation found that there were nearly 15 bits of plastic in every litre of water, not far off the amount found online in garbage patches. While this method is promising, there is a great number of oceans left to explore and investigate, though it should help to prove that there is more ocean plastic at lower depths. For the marine life, this could have fatal issues. The nanoplastics, fragments smaller than a cell, Drifting through the ocean can build up in the tissue of animals, such as fish, leaving them with neurological and reproductive problems. This research should serve as a huge warning for individuals and corporations to actively think about their waste and choices that are being made to aim to reduce the harmful ocean plastics. But what do you make of these latest discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.